the uh, crook and the flail. The symbols that the pharaoh held when in holding judgment in court were to show he's the shepherd and the judge. Yeah, of course, the shepherd um, doesn't particularly own the sheep and so on. Uh, he's working for someone. He's a, he's a vassal. Uh, he may be, you know, your boss, but he's under the owner. The owner of all the earth is God, you see. And in the Egyptian way, it seems that the focus of God on, on man is through the Pharaoh, which, of course, incredibly makes him the kingpin, doesn't it? Makes him, you know, you don't have contact with God except through Pharaoh. It's, it's the priest come king combined role, you see. Um, I mean, he would have priests around him that do the um, priestly work. And by priestly work, I don't just mean ministering to the the serfs, you know, the, your population, but um, but also he's, they're, they're your guide to what God is saying. Um, you know, they're in subjection to you, but their job is to um, communicate uh, God's judgments and so on and, and suggest what the truth is and to inquire into the spirit world, so to speak. And uh, it all focuses on Pharaoh. And of course, if it speaks of a shepherding importance, the time when the um, Hebrew is supposed to be in Egypt, uh, there's a contempt for um, people that keep sheep, which is why they're given the land of Goshen up on the delta. The delta is very fertile, but it's also in some sense, you know, you can put them out the way, out of central hub court area of um, the capital, and um, won't get up the noses of the population because they're, they they believe they worship cattle, you see, not, not sheep. They're of a, an era of the bull, you see, Taurus, I suppose. Um, whereas the Hebrew is seen as a pastoral shepherd type um, mentality, which was actually looked down upon by the Egyptians. There's a sort of picture going on in the story there. But of course, Pharaoh, being who he is, judge and the crook and the frail, frail, frail yeah, um, indicating that his origins are the previous long, long, long before time, aeons before. He's claiming, I think, to be of a civilization much earlier than uh, that of then present ancient Egypt. In, in which case, if it is that far back, we are supposing that it's not in the Nile area at all, but in, in what is then the Sahara, the dried out, vast green area of North Africa that you know, we just see as desert, the Sahara, understood to be because the uh, climate change on the planet as it does, not necessarily due to modern pollution, but just geographical and astronomical features. The monsoon shifting from North Africa and leaving it dry and leaving the traces of settlements dotted across the vastness of the desert now 
once lush greenery and the centre of, well, a vastness of prospering civilization. Perhaps not in the technological way that we are, you know, steel and telecommunications, more stone and uh, spiritual communication, perhaps. A culture more understandable in terms of what we see in something like um, the original peoples we found in Australia, Aboriginal as we've called them. And, um, and what the gypsy picked up in, in, in Europe, a sort of intuition way of living and spiritual powers that don't know, enabled their architecture and gave birth to why they had the architecture they had. Perhaps coming back to it, things like the pyramids and so on, coming back to Egypt. But pyramids have been found in most amazing places across the world you wouldn't expect, you know, the Far East and the Far West, South America and so forth. Even North America, I believe. What I wanted to pick up there was something I got from that book, um, Winged Pharaoh by Joan Grant. Winged Pharaoh by Joan Grant. Uh, purporting to be a, a story um, about first century, first dynasty Egyptian pharaohs, brother and sister running the joint. But the integrity that they were aimed at, that when you sat in judgment in the court, the awesomeness of justice and integrity and godly, noble purpose. The great commission to redress evil, to treat each um, accuser and defendant as equal, no matter what their station in the culture and society might present as. What we feel in fact royalty and government should be an awesome nobility. And by noble I mean faithful and true of integrity and justice and honour, and uprightness, righteousness. Of course, we tend to harp back in history and, and see it um, in a haloed glory, a bit like um, well, the Genesis story, you know, we started in this perfect state, garden, and everything was harmony and beauty. And somehow the world went wrong and we've got what we've got today, you know. Um, but justice and God flows down to ever tidy up such and put it right. A bit like the most earnest um, housekeeper who, housewife, who forever makes the home a beautiful haven for her family. And that this becomes her true loveliness as time goes on. She might get old, 
but the home is heaven, a haven. She's absolutely loved for her motherliness, really. Do you see, we think of justice as cold, distant and arrogant, and royalty too, perhaps, and leadership, that they are detached. But no, they were the love and care of God originally, conceived of, or conceived of as being that originally. Of um, care and compassion, rescue, order, civilization, and therefore peace and hope security and prosperity. This is what Pharaoh was to symbolize by his office and his courtiers of priests and priestesses who would communicate from the, the guidance from the other world, the spirit world. Um, that he might carry out his role, quite literally as father of the nation, you see. I mean, he became a God figure. And it was picked up through so many cultures and generations since. The divine right of kings through, in some sense, their connection with the Godhead to the divine care of man. That in some sense, you see, you bring the holiness of God to your society as your responsibility and role. You could be a priest come king, Melchizedek type thing, the Jesus type thing too, in its sort of theological interpretation, priest and king, ruler of all, but also mediator between man and God. Hmm. 